And welcome back to another flat ball game. You've got myself on the mic here, play by play. It's Brent Wallace, followed by my color commentary man, Prime. Who the heck is James? James McKenna. I'm excited. This is going to be a good game. We've got two great teams here: Dark Horse, who has yet to play a game in this tournament, and the Jasper Bunch, who's currently 0-1. So we are expecting some high-flying plays because somebody's got to win, and we'll see what comes of it. We've got Dark Horse and Dark, Jasper Bunch and White. I'm interested in this Dark Horse team, very experienced, um, lots of veteran leadership on this team. Interested to see how that comes together. Couple veteran Halifax players, a couple Treehucker veterans. I want to see how those players mesh together. They also have a 15 year old child down there and that's always good to see. He's very quick. One uh, smart play that they made was not telling us the entire roster, so we may uh, mess up a few names here, but um, we're working it out as we go along here, waiting for the poll. It's important to have one young cutter, I think. Absolutely. I mean, they're only going to go so long before they just start throwing it up, stall eight, stall nine, and just hope the best. So we have high expectations. Um, as far as things go for the Jasper Bunch, it's mostly Resurgo players, um, as well as Jasper Dupuy. Uh, you'll notice him by the number 69. Nice. Always a good time. And they will probably be looking for the inside flick or inside backhand almost the entire time. And we'll see how that works out for them. If Dark Horse can adjust, they may have a good time on defense. Pull goes up. Ooh, not a Ooh, great Not pull. the best pull you've seen. And in the game, they call that a brick. What does that mean, Prime? Well, uh, it means that the offensive team in white here is going to bring the disc up about 5 or 10 yards outside of the end zone. Uh, gives them a good disposition, lets them set up their offense, uh, and gets them a clean look at their first play here. Let's All see right. what they run. Andre Gallant sees the whole field. Might be Gallant. Oh, not a lot of movement not in the stack. Not seeing much. Oh. He makes the first throw. Like you said, good that grab. inside coming out nice and early. He's got the fake. Sees the around. That is to someone. Oh, that man is just all over the field right now. Oh, he throws it up, oh. and Greg Dennis just eats that up. Not a great decision. Not, He's not happy with that throw. Not his best. He definitely learned a lesson on that time, and that you can't just mess around with Greg Dennis. And here he goes again. He's on the offensive. Uh, He's yeah. going to hook that up. Can he get up that's, there? That's a great matchup. You love to see those, yeah. and he's got that in the end zone. That's, I believe that's Pierre with the catch. Nice, nice receiver. Very tall, very athletic, very smart. Everything Great worked out quite for well for him there. Uh, so that is one nothing Dark Horse. We're seeing up the line. Yeah, it gets bumped from behind, but he takes that and mm. turfs it immediately. So that didn't work out quite as well as he had hoped, I think. Maybe some, uh, some early game jitters here from the Jasper Bunch. Let's see if they can work that out. A veteran, Aaron Liu, going to be picking up the disc here. Very he's exciting. Surveying throw. the field. Playing right-handed, which is uh, out of his element, slightly. Likes to switch things up every once in a while. Gotta Being guarded by uh, Jasper Dupuy, the namesake of the Jasper Bunch. Absolutely. And that's to Georg Hoffman. 66, which is not quite as nice. This uh, Makes the swing, break throw. Once again, Look in middle. Oh, break throw. That's a miscommunication right there, and that's a turn. Can the Jasper Bunch take advantage? Jacques goes to Dupuy. Yeah. He fakes to no one, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. In that case, did not work. He's going to swing that. Surveys the field again. He's got it in the middle of the field. That's where you want to be. Okay. To the break side. Jasper Bunch seeming a little disorganized right now, trying to figure out what stack they want to run. They're going to run it to the open side, which is the right way to go up the field. They're just going to keep working it. Great grab there. Oh, he fakes the, fakes the scuba. Didn't work. Is he going to throw the scuba this time? It might be his only option. Jasper's pointing for it. He wants it. Now he's going to the break side. Oh, the high release works this time. That did not work last time. Oh, he's got the head nod. Throws it up there, and that's a point. And they're now on the board. That is Miguel with the point there. It's you can mark that at home if you've been keeping track. I'm interested to see these Treehucker players, uh, Pierre, Bruno, and Alain, I believe, known for their give-and-go flowy offense. Well... I say that, and he puts up a dime, Huck. Two of those, and you're getting your, on your way to a quarter. Nice throw from Pierre. Sometimes it's not about the give and go. Sometimes you just got to send it. Yeah. And that time, he he sent it. You know, this is, a, it to the middle. is an experienced team, but there's no shortage of athleticism on this Dark Horse team. They could use that a lot as this game progresses. He's looking for an option. Up the open side. Oh, he's going. Poaches off. Great poach there. Oh, just wow. over top. Aaron Liu grabs that, immediately throws the flick, 
And that's another point. Very dynamic thrower, Aaron Liu. Very quick. Uh, live or die by that. So far, they're doing pretty good. That will be 3-1 for Dark Horse. They're playing pretty well right now. Early timeout by the Jasper Bunch. Timeout call. And we're back from the timeout pause. They're still finishing up here, but we're just going to take a quick moment just to talk a little bit about the game so far. Um, as we've noted, there was a, a fair bit of the inside throws coming from the Jasper Bunch. It's, it's worked out for the most part. It's when they started to try to go over the top that things have kind of fallen apart. Um, and on the other side of things, they're, they're really just missing those the defensive transitions that they're going to need because, like you said, uh, Prime, Aaron Liu, very dynamic thrower. He can uh, he can really make that work the entire time. So they're going to need to adjust to that. Um, as you can see, we have a new player joining on the Dark Horse side, which is Stuart Shoup. Uh, All-around good guy. Can probably uh, contribute to the, to the team here. Another smart player to join their team. <laughs> Lots of intelligence out there. So far, able to handle the... Um, Somewhat messy offense of the Jasper Bunch. If they can clean that up, we'll see if they can, if Dark Horse can keep getting these poaches, and uh, or they'll have to start playing a little bit tighter on their man. Absolutely, I think uh, this time it was a good decision by them. They probably noted that their their vertical stack was not working out very well. It seems like they are still a little bit late just getting back into the stack, so we'll have to see what comes of it. But as long as they can clean those cuts up, I like to like their chances. Halo strike off throw. the start. Interesting look. Back to the middle. That's Yannick. And he's got the swing there. But again, we're just seeing them fall right back into that sloppy offense. But sometimes you just got to throw them up hey. there and hope for the best. Better to be uh, lucky than good, I always say. Oh, well. but you still got to have the, uh, the tightness of your throws. Even if you're th three feet away or 12 feet away, it's all the same throw. Working it back and forth. Those tree huggers, they sure do know each other. Lots of chemistry on the field. Oh, there. quick throw. They're just going to take advantage of that. That's floaty, but can he get there to play the defense? Oh! A land with a very nice grab. Two I, men draped all over him. He still gets up there. Usually you got to pay extra for that. Absolutely. So that brings us to 4-1. to one, And the Jasper Bunch is reeling right now. We're going to have to see if they can pull themselves out of this. It's a, it's a tough spot to be in, but... Coming off another game early this morning, right? So there may be a little bit of a legs issue. That's true. We've got a fresh Dark Horse team, which is going to be vital for them because they do have a, another game immediately after, so they're going to have to work on that. Oh. oh, he gets up there too and just takes that away from him. Excellent grab. Now he wants the score. Pierre just working. Bruno. Again, that connection between them uh, from the tree huckers and still up the line to Greg Dennis. That's another point for Dark Horse. Execution on Dark Horse is impeccable right now. Not giving Jasper Punch any looks at a clean D here. I don't think they've really made any turns, and if it was, it was a pretty, pretty good look regardless. But uh, Jasper Dupuis is going to bring this in on the sideline. He, oh, he wanted the full field huck, but decided better of it. Might have been a good decision, because it looked like Pierre was ready. All right, we've got the swing. They're trying to make, work it back to the middle. They've been making those break throws look pretty easy, which is good. Starting to look a little bit more like a zone look here. Oh, he makes the throw. Ooh. And Jock just couldn't handle that. That's okay. He's he showing a little emotion, happens. though. He's showing a bit of emotion, a little frustration on the sideline. But he yeah. knows that he'll catch that nine times out of ten. Maybe some fire is what they need. I'm, I'm just looking lethargic out there. Absolutely a little emotion. And Bruno is just going to throw that one up there. Oh, he couldn't make it the whole way. No foul call. Oh. Yannick brings it to the line. He's ready to throw. And uh, that's picked off. <clears throat> 71, is, heads up deep. Yes, that is Martin, who's played a lot with these Moncton, Moncton fellas, so he likely knows their strategy quite well, and he's able to get into the end zone and score another point, putting Dark Horse up another score, 5-1. to one. Andre brings it in, and another poach off D. I don't think that uh, the Jasper Bunch is really recognizing the play here. And Stuart Shoup immediately makes a contribution as he makes that great break throw. 3-1. A 3 nothing <laughs> run after the timeout, Which, not what you want coming out of a timeout. You only sure. get one timeout per game, and the Jasper Bunch took theirs, and it seems to have not worked out, as you're mentioning there, Prime. He's got the open side slash. That could work out. Oh, he makes a good throw there. They're still on the sideline. They want to get a little bit more to the middle. Oh, he's just going to send it. You love to see it. Oh, he couldn't get up there. He adjusted his hat a little bit too early and just couldn't get his uh, legs under him as he did it. It's and important he... to look good when you score. Absolutely. Also important to catch the disc. 
the best part of scoring is actually catching it. It's one of the most vital pieces of that, but uh, looking good also helps. You just got to have both pieces and put them together like a puzzle. Just gets tapped in. Oh, quick slash up the line. The communication is phenomenal here. As you said, they're just working off of each other. They know where each other wants to go, and it's very clean. It's a, it's a brand of Ulta we don't see a lot in Halifax. <laughs> very common in New Brunswick, and these players play it better than almost anyone. Absolutely. And the Halifax players are also adjusting very well to the play style that the Moncton players seem to like. Aaron Liu directing the defense. Known as a, a premier handler defender on the West Coast, uh, Team Canada, all-star. He tries to jump in there. Didn't work out. Andre with the disc. Swings it. Oh, another swing. He's thinking about it. He thinks better of it. He might be recognizing those poaches that we've seen all through the game. And Jasper Dupuy, number 69, scores that one. Nice. Bruno he brings it in. Doesn't even quick. tap it in. Doesn't worry too much about that. Rules are overrated. Aaron Liu, quick little throw. As you said, still playing that dynamic def or offense. And that's going to go into the end zone again. So... The Jasper Bunch has got a couple of points on the board, but it just seems that they're getting swamped here by Dark Horse. Yeah, uh, they need to figure out their offense a little bit, and then, I mean, anything on defense would be really important for them. Absolutely. Just not putting a lot of stops on the board. Yeah, Nick makes that open side. Still throws it up the open side sideline. They're pretty tight. they got to work that around. There we go. Gets it to the middle. Yeah, Nick with the disc again. He's looking for JD. Can't see him. Goes to the open side. That's a good look. Good dumps here, and he's gonna go to the break side. That's floaty. Oh, Can he get up there? Oh. oh, he takes that away. Can't teach that. No, that is correct. He's got those young springy legs, and he put them to full use there. And really amazing timing. You don't see that. A lot of young players, they get up big, and they're just nowhere near the disc, but he timed that perfectly. And that was Jonathan Verrett that he got over there. It's, uh, it's a good play by Martin. Uh, probably one of the future best players within the Moncton area. He just about grabs that one too, which was a little bit behind him. Jonathan looking for the throw. He sees the poach, recognizes that. He wants to look to the middle. Stuart Shoe playing a little bit off the man. Yannick throws it. Oh, that's dribbled off the hands. Again, hate to see that, but it's going to happen from time to time. Definitely the right look. Just some execution errors absolutely killing the Jasper. Aaron Liu, big fake here. there. Oh, great play by Miguel. He grabs that one right from him. Players may be getting a little bit too comfortable with their throws here. Another, just a little bit of a bop off the old kneecap there, which is going to happen when you're running with your hands on your knees. Looks to the end zone. That's He's going to get up there, Pierre, with another point. He is a scoring machine right now. And, it, and Lou makes that throw look easy. Beautiful touch on that. As we said, dynamic thrower. You know, If he's on, very hard to stop people getting open downfield. So who are we looking for here, Prime? It seems that there are quite a few players on Dark Horse that seem to be the uh, real battery of the offense, but who do you think's really running the show out there? Certainly on defense, Aaron Liu looks to be directing traffic. Very smart player. Um, as I said before, a lot of veteran players, so they really know how to play in certain roles, how to work with each other. We see Aaron Liu just absolutely poaching the lane, looking to play as much help defense as possible. Now he tends to poach that lane quite a little bit there. Oh, a little push pass. But do you find that to be an effective defense strategy? Seemed to work there. Oh, potential foul call here. He does believe... We're going to chat. We're going to see what happens. Reenacting, always an important part of uh, talking out calls. How Sometimes... Else is, how else are we going to know what happened? Absolutely. I'm surprised at this no contest. I thought Aaron Luke had a good chunk of that disc before any contact happened without any sort of dangerous play. That's a fair point made, Prime. I have to agree with you there. But Aaron Liu is also a great competitor, but also all-around great guy. So he might have just uh, wanted to give him the look there. Whoa! Oh, big foot block by Stuart You don't Shoot. see it often, but you love to see it when it's there. Just a, and right off the bat, great Immediate luck. transition offense, which is great. So that is a huge transition from the big foot block by Stuart Shoup. Doesn't have the biggest shoe size out there, but he does have quick feet. And it, it just seemed to work out that time. Immediately goes to the offensive. And they throw that deep, and uh, they hit their man, which is just the story of this game so far. I've always said it doesn't matter how big your shoe is, it matters how you walk. That's correct, and sometimes it's all about how you kick. He gets up there. Back to the middle. This is Andre. He's got the disc. He's, he surveys the field again. Wants to see something. He sees no cuts. You can tell by the handshake. 
Aaron Liu, again, just poaching off, just reads the disc better than anybody out there. He is really running the show on defense, like you said, Prime. Great flick. Spreads the field. That's a break throw, and that's in the end zone. Called. Oh, there is a pick call. Great call there, Prime. Can you explain to the fans what a pick call is? Well, unlike basketball, you can't uh, use other players on the field to get your defender loose. Uh, the defender felt like he was obstructed from playing good defense by another player on the field. Called a pick. This is going to come back to the thrower. I appreciate that. It's always good to get that information. During the explanation, we got another point for Dark Horse. And sometimes they say, Prime, that Ultimate needs a little bit more contact. So what do you think? Maybe we should adopt the basketball play of picks. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, the, the difference is, I think, in basketball, you don't have a lot of guys running full speed at 40 yards. And when that happens, if you get in the way of someone, uh, it's just not going to end up well. I think Ultimate relies on a lot of trust and spirit and uh, safety. And I don't know if that's going to happen if you start allowing picks. I think that's a very educated opinion. And Stewardship gets up there. Oh, he just could not bring that in. He tried for the second effort and knocked it away from himself, actually. And Nick's going to bring that to the line. Jasper Bunch needs a point here. They bring him to the middle. Miguel got that one easy enough. Open side. He loves that high release, it seems. Oh, he's got that to the end zone. It's not going to work out. And Martin just uh, eats that one up. We that's apologize for the Martin noise matchup. in the backup. I don't know if that's a wise idea. It seems like he's got the legs for it. Nice D by Jasper there. Jasper Dupuy takes that away. I'm surprised we don't see Jasper downfield more often. Tall, athletic, you know, getting on there in age, but uh, still got the legs under him. I know I've seen it before. Seems to be going now. Oh, no, he goes back into the stack. What do you think? Is he a little bit tired out? Certainly possible. Sees the fake. Looking scuba potentially here. No, nope, he's going to hit that open side. That's great. Does the full circle. Almost looks like he's setting a pivot there. Oh, nice, Scuba. Andre is going to the open side, and that is a point for the Jasper Bunch. They really needed that one. Yeah, Jasper is going to need a bigger uh, slot here if Jasper Bunch is going to pull back in this game. Very versatile player. Like I said, tall, athletic, also good throws. Needs to use everything in his arsenal if they're going to get back into it. Absolutely. We've got Greg Dennis throwing Aaron Liu. Aaron Liu hits Pierre. Back to Aaron Liu, and he sees the open. Oh, that might have touched the turf. Uh, it yeah. did. No point there. So Jasper Bunch could do a little two-for-one action here, which we love to see. Starts at one point at a time. That's all you need. Oh, Miguel with the big fake to the break side. Pierre, a little bit confused with his uh, his cutter there. Aaron Lewis still poaching off quite a bit, and they just have not been able to adjust to that. Jonathan Brett, he's looking to the open side again. Aaron almost gets a hand on that without even looking to the open side. Can Jonathan, you see Yannick? Yes, he can. Very poached right now. Very poached on that op or, uh, that uh, break side, and yeah, Nick yeah. sees it. Jasper nice grabs that one. That is the two for one that they were looking for. They just might pull themselves back into this game here. Jasper getting that point. You see him puffing and panting a little bit there. Definitely tiredness seems to be an issue right now. I was actually interviewing Jasper earlier today. He said that that's a new breathing technique that he's taken on. It's actually a way of conserving energy as opposed to appearing tired, but... The look of it makes him seem like he's fatigued, which is also a tactic. And during the play and that explanation, we had Aaron Liu throwing very deep down to Martin, and he just snatches that one up. Very impressive catch on Martin. You see, he pulled his defender towards the disc, forcing him underneath it, and then able to pull off and make an easy grab. Very smart play by a young player. Absolutely. A little bit of contact, and he ate that up just without too much effort and was able to go to the uh, opposite side of the field and take the disc. He eats like Barrett is breakfast. just looking for the disc, but he needs to get out of there. He has got to clear. And we see a matchup. Can he get up there? No, oh. he cannot. Nice pressure by Bruno. It's a good box out by Bruno, as you mentioned. Can Giving you up see a couple inches, but uh, smart play. Yes, you got. sometimes that's uh, all you can do. You might not be the tallest, but if you're the smartest, you might have the best play out there. we got to be careful, and he makes a good play. Bruno's in the end zone. Some might call that a double happiness, but he didn't actually get the D. Don't need to touch the D before for it not to count. That's a very good point. And the Jasper Bunch is going to bring it in again. Jasper, as you mentioned, was huffing and puffing a little bit there, but I haven't seen him take a sub yet. He really wants this disc, and he wants to score. I wonder if he knows he's allowed to sub. Not super fluent on the rules, Jasper. Great guy, though. Oh, Jacques just throws it up there. He's got to look. He's got to see it. Oh, he bobbles a few oh, times and just couldn't reel that one in. I think he was pressured by Martin, and that's quite all right. Sometimes it's harder when you get both hands on the disc. Absolutely. Sometimes it's better to just rip that thing down with one hand. You have to read the spin of the disc a little bit more, but Georg Hoffman's just going to launch that one to Greg Dennis, and that is in the end zone as well. Barely had to hop there. 
A lot of chemistry between those two players, played a lot together. Not surprised to see that connection. Two Halifax players not necessarily playing with the flow of the Moncton players. They were working more off the, the deep pucks instead of the quick give and goes. But again, it, results are results, and that's all you can ask for. It's the defense that's just stifling right now. And that's another Speaking big of defense. Defensive play made. Dave Bowes, another double happiness. He is in the end zone without too much of a mark there. We're three minutes to halftime, and I think Jasper Bunch really needs that halftime. You know, I, the, the body language, not impressive right now with the Jasper Bunch. You don't need to come back all at once. If you get a couple points going into half, that can start you off well coming into that second half. I think they're going to need to relook at the stack that they've been running because it just doesn't seem to be working, and they're just taking any shot they can right now. Everything to the break side. It works out that time. Great, great look. Straight to the chest, and he reels that one in without too much effort. As you said, sometimes it's best to go with one hand, sometimes it's best to go to two hands. It seems like they're starting to recognize the poaching by Dark Horse, throwing a fake to get those poachers to bite, and then hitting that break side look. They've got that a couple times now. Let's see if they can turn back to that. But again, it's the offense that they really just can't slow down. Uh, sign that kid to a contract. He cannot be stopped. <laughs> and Nick's going to bring this one to the line. He's going to be looking for, like you said, that break side look. He's got somebody in the middle, no issues there. Grabs it with one hand. Jonathan Verrett, again, with his hands straight in the air. He's looking for that disc. He's hungry. But he's got to reset those cuts, make sure that he gets to the right area. Yannick again. Oh, just misses. Oh, he wants him. Verrett on the open or break side, sort. Looks back to the middle. Can they make this work? Yannick's open. No, oh, he's shut down there. Oh, they're going to the break side. Verrett rips that one down with one hand. You know, you hate to say it's a bad decision, so I won't. Great throw, great catch. Absolutely, you're bang on with that one. And there was a little bit of uh, contestion in there, but uh, you know what? You can always clear out congestion with a little bit of effort, right? Yeah, and some nasal spray, that helps too. Absolutely. Got to use that netty pot. And that is an open side throw by Aaron Liu. That goes to Pierre. Into Martin. Martin. He runs well, but he also God. throws well. He's putting that one to the end zone, and Georg rips it off the line. Keeps his toes inbound, and that is another point for Dark Horse. Get this kid on Team Canada, my goodness. He did quite well. He was at the uh, U24 workouts in, here in Halifax just over the summer. He did pretty well for himself, but uh, just with the age, I believe he's just going to be working on his skills and development before he goes to a higher level type of uh, team like that. He's but, got a bright future in the sport. Absolutely. If he keeps with it, and um, just keeps working the way he's going. I think he's going to do well. If he grows a little bit, that could be a big help for him too, as long as he keeps the uh, same form that he's got here. Jasper Bunch looking scrambled again. They're looking to the middle, but two people are cutting to the same space again and again here. Andre sees a few options. He wants to jam it. He decides better of it. Good decision. Back to Andre. Fakes the scuba. Oh, he wants a cut. It's the hand motion that really tells you the frustration on this team. Gets it to Jacques. Back to Andre. Can he see that in time? No. That's a great seal by Dave Bowes there. He just dropped off the mark ever so slightly, enough to make it a little bit harder to make that throw. Running the offense through Andre here. He's got the disc ready to go. But he, again, he's frustrated with his cuts. He's not getting enough. Oh, the drop off didn't help that, that time. Sometimes pure, pure speed is just going to get to the uh, the offense there. Patience gets rewarded. Nice flow by Jasper Bunch. That could be useful going into that second half. Get that point going into the halftime. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. And here we are back for the second half. We're a 14 7 score for Dark Horse right now. Prime, what do you think the uh, Jasper Bunch is going to need to get back into this game here? Uh, offensively, they're going to smarten up. They showed some patience at the end there, which was key. Defensively, they're going to need to create some stops here. They have not put a lot of pressure on Dark Horse. Dark Horse almost doing what they want on the field. A lot of athletes, a lot of good throwers, but Jasper Bunch has got to figure something out on that end if they want to get back in this game. Now, as you can see, Dark Horse does not have the largest roster. They might get a little bit tired towards the end of this game. How do you think that's going to bode for them? Um, they're, a lot, they're smart players, so they could manage that pretty well. They're not playing defense super hard, honestly, on the man, so doesn't seem to be an issue for them, but definitely continuing on the day might become a problem later on. 
I think you're probably right there. I think Jasper Bunch here just really needs to work that clean offense, make them run around a little bit more, and just do the best that they can. Feel out the game and, and kind of go from there. You want to end on a positive note instead of letting the body language take over. We have seen a lot of frustration on all ends, whether it's the handlers looking for cuts or the uh, the marks not getting the, the wraps as, as easy as they'd like to do, but... As long as they can bring it all together, I think they can they can take away a lot from this game and, and look forward towards the uh, the rest of this tournament here. Can't help but notice that some of the players on the Jasper Bunch are wearing gloves indoors. I, I, morally, I just can't agree with that. I think we can all agree with you there, Prime. It's uh, one thing to wear one glove, but another thing to wear two. And a lot of players out there are doing both, so you kind of have to root against those folk. Well, in comes the pull. This one actually stays inbounds, which is a lot Great better pull. than the first pull that we saw in this game. That's going to get centered to Bruno. Back to Stu Shoup. He is looking early. Fakes it and still has enough time to get that off. Martin very in the end zone. Does a 180 and just sends it. Spike it on him. He doesn't. I don't know how you stop that guy. I believe the old adage is you just don't. <laughs> ah, I haven't heard that one before. Yes, absolutely. Up the line. Yannick grabs that. He is left-handed, so this could work quite well for him. Left-handed and a very interesting thrower. Lots Absolutely. of release points. He's got a lot of different uh, angles that he can use, and he likes to use them all. He believes it looks quite good. Oh, oh, just about nice gets there. Effort. He lays out, oh, puts his body passes. down. Martin is going to go into the end zone again. That worked out quite well for him again. It seems like every time he goes to the end zone, he's getting the disc. They trust him a lot, and it seems like he's just not running out of energy at this point. I don't know if young people ever run out of energy. That's another good point. I've, I've seen a lot of young people in my life, and I don't know if I've ever seen a tired young person. Now, they're going to be bringing this one to the line. They do have to work pretty hard to make sure that they're, they're getting back into this game. They're already down two points in this half, which brings the lead for Dark Horse up to nine. A lot of high-release looks from uh, the number eight. Not sure of the name right off. He's going to keep it to the center. Swings it to the sideline. They're staying on that sideline. That's going to go out of bounds, which is not where you want the disc. You actually cannot play the disc from out of bounds. Uh, one part about the game that just doesn't seem to make sense is that it's only on one field. Uh, I think that seems pretty normal to me. It would be difficult playing on two fields. Agree to disagree. But always, always great to hear your opinion on that one there, Prime. And he's got the disc on the sideline. He's throwing the full field hammer. What's going to come of it? Big oh, crowd good. in there. Georg attempted to get over him, but just couldn't get there. Not the best decision we've seen all day. These are the opportunities that the Jasper Bunch needs to take advantage of to get back in this game. Jasper might have to get there, but Aaron Liu just also had to get there and got there first. This looks Little like miscommunication there, but can here. Georg make it? No, he certainly cannot. He wanted that disc, but just didn't want to put his body on the line. <laughs> in a matchup of experienced, smart players versus younger, athletic players, the older experienced players, they want this, these Hawks to come out. These bad decisions, they're looking for that. They want this kind of game so they can use their uh, experience to their advantage. You know, a lot of these Hawks are coming up and they aren't working out very well. They're usually a little bit flat or not making it all the way to where they want it to go. And Dave Bose was able to eat that one up without too much effort. Bruno's got that one on the sideline. He's looking deep, brings it in. Nice little flick there. Oh, he's got that up in the air. Yannick's not looking. He just right on his man, Safe wasn't play. able to stop him. Pierre grabs that with one hand and just viciously throws it to the ground. Yannick's looking, he's got a, got a man there. Miguel into the center, surveys, he's using his pivot foot, oh great look there. Can he go to the break side? Oh great flick into the end zone, but Andre just has one oh. foot out, push pass. One of the greatest passes you'll ever see is the push pass. That's your count for two. That's an incredible Absolutely throw. versatile pass. You never know when you're going to need one of those, but it's always good to whip one out. Bruno with the inside flick. Goes a little bit higher than he wanted. Andre pulls that one down. They're back on the offense. Dark Horse looking a little sloppy out here to start the second half. See if they can bring that back under control. Dupuy, number 69, looks around. Yes. To the center. Number eight, holds the disc. Sees it. Sets up fake. He's got Lou moving, which is good. Barrett grabs it. Again, a lot of these fake scubers we're seeing out there. It doesn't seem to move the defender all that much, though. Andre's got all the time in the world. Jasper Bunch very spread out, not getting a lot of clean looks towards the end zone. You gotta throw that one around. Nope. Oh, he again just you gotta look dump here. Ferret looks dump. Makes a great throw. Can he get to the open side? Yes, he can, just Miguel. Blown coverage. 
sometimes being smart is actually kind of dumb. That's a good point again made there. Bruno brings the disc back in. He's got that to the center. Oh, can he get there? Yes, he does. He takes that one away. A little bit underthrown there. I think he wanted a bit more curve on that one. Jasper Dupuy, number 69, going to pick this one up. Yes. Looks around. Sees Jacques. Looks him off. Goes to number eight. Number eight's got Yannick. Not the best throw that you see out there, but Yannick still puts the effort into it, and the disc rolls over to the soccer net. Eight has not moved since he made that throw, just stunned by his poor decision. I think he's still trying to figure out exactly what went wrong there, but it actually was just the fact that he didn't throw it very well. That's definitely part of it. Aaron Lou's going to bring this one in. We've got a lot of pressure on Jasper Bunch here to bring the score back, but Aaron Lou probably wants to just slow down the offense. They've had a lot of hucks not work out. Dave Bowes is going deep. Makes a great cut, clear space. Aaron Lou with a classic point in his throw. Tried to beat that. Georg gets that. Cross field, they're moving him. Dave Bowes after that deep cut, now on the under. Stu shoot, sees him. Martin wants to get up there. Oh, and he's done it to him. And he says, eat this one, Jasper. I'm just going to take it. Martin giving up significant inches to Jasper. Makes a highlight reel play. The crowd is loving it. I don't think I've ever seen a play just quite like that. Jasper gives him props for it. He's about half his age or less. Barrett throws it to Yannick. Yannick, huge fake there. Throws it to JD. Oh, Martin, watch this. He's putting his body out there. Jasper, not oh, attacking huge the disc, fake. almost gives up a free. Right to the middle. Andre sees the field again. He's got to gotta find the right look here. Opens up his body a little bit more. Verrett, again, cutting a little bit too deep into it. He wasn't really hustling towards the end of that cut, and he needs to. Aaron Lou eats that one, and he's got the disc to Martin. Back to Lou. Dave Bowes, clearing space. He's open right now. They could see this. Bruno makes a great slash. He's going to the, uh, Dave Bowes going to the break side here. Back to Pierre. Oh, Pierre wanted that one. Decides better of it. Oh, a little bit of a foot there. I believe it was a foul call on the mark. Well, foul call on the mark. Okay, that's call one interesting. Of those it away. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, personal opinion here, Prime, was that that might not have been a foul call or a foul in itself, but everybody's entitled to an opinion. Hard to say the, the marks between us and the disc. Couldn't get a good, clean look at it. Wasn't a great decision either. But sometimes that's okay. You get bailed out by the fact that somebody hit your hand. Oh, great grab on the line there. He's going to recenter that one. Bruno sees him. Three men in the in the triangle there. That's a new defensive strategy I've seen. Greg Dennis holds it. Oh, Andre had the wrong force there in the sideline. Let him know. Oh, just about swipes that way away from him. Andre really dramatized that one. Glad he caught it, though. Completely necessary. Absolutely necessary. Swings to the sideline. Number eight, again, thinking about that flick that he threw earlier. He's got that one. Number 12, holds onto the disc. Up to Jacques. Jacques fakes. Fakes again. Now he's going up the line. Oh, no, he fakes again. Triple nice, fake. Nice dump cut. I haven't Great seen one of those since 1987. Were you alive in 1987? I was not. Hmm. Great throw to the sideline, though. We can just neglect the fact that I was not born in 1987. We'll just look past that one. Love to see that he threw that throw earlier. It didn't work out. Not afraid to take that shot again. And absolutely nails the execution. Wonderful decision there. And it works out to get Jasper Bunch back on the board. They are in the double digits at this point, which is great to see. I believe the score is 15 to 10 right now. That doesn't seem to make sense, though. Stuart Shoup makes a great bid there, but it didn't work out. Oh, fakes. Back to the middle. Over to Yannick. He sees it. He fakes it. Back to the middle again. Number 12 holds that disc. He's got Jacques, but Jacques's not moving. Yannick holds the disc. Sees Jacques. Two people again Ooh. making that same cut. It's not going to work. Oh, he's standing right in the middle, just wants it. Dave Bowes eventually tightens up the D. Oh. Yannick throws the wonderful inside. Oh, and he spiked that one down to the ground and almost said, let's get back into this. Jasper Bunch parting the Red Sea in the end zone, just a clear lane through the middle and a great throw. Was that Yannick? That was Yannick. Nice great lefty. throw. It really helps to be lefty when you're trying to throw on that side of the field. Sure does. Timeout call. Yeah. Oh, oh, my. Dark seeing the tides turning a little bit, looking to get this game back under control. Not a lot of energy coming out of uh, Jasper Bunch, considering they just forced that timeout. And once again, you oh, have yeah, to wonder. We're on, we're on a pause. Once, once again, you have to wonder, are those legs becoming an issue? Uh, as this timeout goes, we'll uh, have a quick break here. 
And we are back from the timeout. Again, Jasper Bunch has an opportunity to bring this one back. They've got 15 minutes to play, which is quite a bit of time. We've only spent 40 minutes watching this game so far. And there have been a timeout from each side, so not a lot of game played entirely. But they've gone on a bit of a run here, Prime. They've certainly started to. Um, Dark Horse calling that timeout, hoping to stem the tide. We'll see if it was effective. Keep in mind again that Dark Horse does have another game immediately after this, and they probably are thinking a little bit towards the future as they want to be the top uh, top team in their pool. It's hard not to when you get up by an early lead to start thinking about the next game, but this game is certainly not over. There's a lot of game left to play, and there's a throw up there. It does not work immediately out of the timeout. A turn forced by the Jasper Bunch. You really hate to see that. Uh, you, know, you call your timeout, looking to get the team back on track, and just immediately turn it over. Not ideal. Andre's looking means. around. He sees Yannick again. Not the best decision, but it works out. He had that one up in the air just high enough to get over. I believe that was Georg Hoffman. Why not? Why not just throw that? Absolutely. Why not is always the best question. Stu Shoop in the middle here. He's going to look for it. You know he is. He wants the hand. He's got the hand. Brings him under. Pierre throws that one. Sees Greg Dennis. Dave Bowes has him up the line. Aaron Liu with the point there. He's scored a lot of points in his career here, Prime, but I think that might be one of the biggest he's ever scored. Hands down. I have to imagine he'd agree with that. Uh, Andre just throws it up there. Number 69, JD wants revenge and he gets it. You want to get excited about a play like that. Unfortunately, Hard to cheer against the man, six foot three, skying a four foot two player. Either way, it ends up happening, and Stu Shoop throws up a hammer to nobody. Kind of reminiscent of Casper McCulley in the recent men's league, who threw up a hammer to no one, which ended in a universe loss for his team. Garrett Jung also ends up with the loss. Classic Garrett Jung. Jasper Bunch certainly hoping they can get the universe point win here if they get to that point. We've got it on the sideline. Number eight, again, still struggles a little bit with that break flick, but he's got it to JD. Oh, JD grabs it away from Martin. Looks hammer. Throws the flick up there. Oh, tipped away by Greg Dennis. You love to see it. Scoring now 17-13 for Dark Horse. Uh, inching closer and closer. Jasper Bunch trying to make that push right now. That's a pretty interesting score, Prime, considering we thought that it was 14 to seven going into the second half, but they just seem to have not scored quite as much in bunches as they would have liked. Number eight gets a little bit confused on the defensive mark there. Martin rips one down, shows it to JD again, who wasn't even close. That's a hard read to make on the defense. Uh, just over your head, a nice throw by Greg Dennis. They're telling him to speed up the desk. He may not be the right person to pick that up, but he's got it. He makes a good throw to Miguel. He's going to deep ball that one. Jacques running. He gives up on it. He pulls up a little bit lame there. In a game like this, you, you want to see a bid there. All right, he's going to bring it to the line. That's Pierre again. Brings it in. Sees Bruno up the line. Doesn't want it. Looks to the middle. Greg Dennis uncovered there. The defense is, again, slowing down quite a bit here. Bruno back to the disc in the middle. I wonder if this is a defensive choice or if we're just seeing some tired legs here by the Jasper Bunch. I have to think it's tired legs. Yeah, Nick doesn't even see that disc. It ends up in the end zone. That's not what you wanted on defense. Just a lucky throw. That's, that's makes definitely it how they drew that play up. 100%. I have to respect the fact that you think that, Prime. Again, I don't agree with you, though. Verrett is very open. He gives up on the cut, which is not like what he's been doing all game long. Andre, oh, a little high release fake. Onto the sideline. Andre makes the upline cut. I like the tempo we're seeing from Jasper. Unfortunate turn over there, but they're playing with a little bit more intensity right now. That's to the middle. Pierre sees it. Oh, he's got that flick bomb coming out. Dave Bowes, is he going to have to lay out? No, he doesn't have to at all. An easy clap catch. A great throw, great vision by Pierre. Absolutely. Dave Bowes pulls that one in. He's got a great jersey on. Have to say, probably one of the best jerseys that we've seen all day today, Prime. I believe it's 99, but how can you tell with all that color? There's a lot going on in that jersey. Colors everywhere. You love to see it. Verrett throws it up there. He's going to dime ball that one to 69 JD. Nice. And that's into the middle. Number eight holds the disc. I believe that's our second number eight that we have on the field here. A little bit on experience. Throws that one over. High release. JD's got his hands. He wants it. He's not getting it, though. He goes into the dump position, ready to roll. Number eight again. Two number eights on the field. It's a little bit confusing for the fans at home, but whose fault's that? 
Not ours. It's going to be hard, I think, for this Jasser bunch to get a lot of action downfield with Dupuis hanging out backfield. You know, certainly a, an adequate thrower, but with that height and athleticism, you want to see him downfield creating some mismatches. I agree with you there, Prime. I think he's really got to get down into the into the stack or take a sub. If he's a little bit tired out, you shouldn't just be hanging out in the dump space. Leave it for somebody like Yannick to do. That's a good play by Bruno. He's, he makes that in a safe way as well. Poaches off, but also gets the D. Very spirited player. Great defender. Stu Shoop throws one up there. That gets to D Greg Dennis again. Back to Pierre. Wants Greg Dennis. Sees him. Oh, the little pop fake. Love to see. Oh, he gets him with the hand fake, but it doesn't work because of the throw by Dennis there. Only explanation I can think of is that he's wearing a glove. Absolutely. Even though he threw that one with his right hand, the glove probably had effect on it. Is he going to make that deep ball? Oh, he decides to go with the uh, full field hammer. Wise. Gets up there, and that's a D. Do you credit that to the defense, or do you credit that to the thrower? Uh, I mean, I have to say the defense. The throw is certainly not what you want, but... He's got he Marte open. That's not who you want in the end zone. Oh, he scores again. Just a nose for finding the end zone. A lot of defensive players are looking around. They're a little bit confused on what happened there. Defensive breakdown might have been because he's too quick. Might have been because they're all a little bit taller than him. But they didn't respect the player. Andre brings that disc into the middle. Swings it to the open side. Nobody's looking around. Hardly anybody moving at this point. Back to Andre. He sees Verrett deep. Verrett's not looking at the disc, though. That's not how you catch it. This, this Dark Horse defense is intriguing. Not a lot of movement, but they seem to be getting turned somehow. Absolutely. I believe it's partially on those throwers who aren't putting enough touch on it. Greg Dennis on the sideline. He's forced, but gets it to Pierre. Swings it. And back to Aaron Liu. Aaron Liu again having a great game. He sees Pierre again. That's a hammer. Oh, he gets it to the break side. Dave Bowes. Another clap catch for him. Andre brings it in. They're trying to rush a little bit here. They're, they don't even have any players on the field. Andre's gone deep. You got to let that cut develop a little bit. Oh, the hammer comes out. Miguel grabs that one. I believe that makes it 21-13 for Dark Horse. Uh, the, the gap has gotten bigger with this latest flurry of points. It's going to be hard. Only eight minutes left for Jasper Bunch to bring this back in. We'll see what they can do here. Stuart Shoup not looking dump. He wants Martin the entire time, and Martin bails him out. That's probably a high stall count. Great inside flick. Gets to Dave Bowes. This kid is just killing it. Certainly player of the game right now. I, I want to know how other teams are going to defend this guy. Absolutely. I have a hard time believing that anybody's really going to have uh, much to say about it. I think you just have to give him credit and give him the point. He's only one player, so he can't have all that big of an impact. But... It's just the fact that they have so many support players around him. Everything seems to be going Dark Horse's way here. Oh, Stuart Shoup just throws it up. Yannick doesn't bite at all, but he says, I still did it. Georg toes that one, just gently sets it down. He's scored a point before in his life. He knows how to do it. One or two, certainly. Georg um, been around for a while. Number 69, Jasper Dupuy brings this one in. Up to Yannick. Yannick again, lefty. He has that open field there. Doesn't take it. Gets the swing to the sideline. JD up the line. Is he going to make it? Yes, he does. Now he's probably looking hammer here, which has been not working out all that well for them. Oh, you got to see the inside there. Can you get it around him? No, he fakes it. Great fake, though. Probably should have taken it to Verrett, but he didn't make it there. Gets it to Verrett. He's looking in the middle of the field. He's got options everywhere. Oh, no look throw. Pops it up there. Martin takes it away from him. What more can you ask from this man? Jasper Bunch, once again, just very spaced out in the end zone, not getting into a stack. Oh, that's a throw. That's up the field. He is going. That's a good grab there. Oh, uh, this guy needs some the nice line. separation. Went over to Lou. Lou is just looking around. He's got all the time in the world. No, no pressure here. All they have to do is swing to win. Dave Bowes oh, makes the cut open side. Doesn't work out. Back to Atlanta. Back to Aaron Lou. Hammer comes up. That's to Dave Bowes. Not a clap catch that time. He actually missed that one, Prime. Just through both hands, towing the back end zone line, maybe a little bit uh, lofty there from Aaron Liu. Usually has those hammers on point, but a little bit high on that one. Absolutely. And for those that don't watch a lot of flat ball, that's called a miss. That is called a miss. 
up the line. Another miss. We have seen two of them in a row there. That's incredible flat ball. Jasper looking at the disc in absolute disgust. Not pleased with what he's seeing on the field. Dave Bowes makes the undercut. Oh, the hammer fake again by Lou. Not you afraid to, to throw the it. same throw again. He'll throw that to 20 times in a row. Dave Bowes is going breakside. He wants another chance at that hammer catch because of the miss from before. But he goes open side instead and scores. Like we said earlier, Jasper Munch not putting a lot of pressure on defensively. And they're going to need to fix this moving on for the rest of the day. Again, it's the body language that's really bringing them down here. They, Absolutely. You can just see negativity spewing out from their pores. That might even be sweat, but it's a little bit of both, I think. They should see a doctor about that, I think. I'm not even sure a doctor could help. They might need to see some voodoo masters at this point. But here we go. Disc is back in. Andre with the break throw. That's something to feel positive about. Martin, great seal there. Oh, Aaron Liu wants some more Ds. Dark Horse set up, very poachy, looking to switch everything in that horizontal stack. Seems that they're conserving energy again. Like we said, Prime, they have a little bit of a smaller roster than the uh, rest of the teams here, but Yannick's looking to that throw to Andre. Oh, he makes it. Inside flick gets it in there. Again, that lefty is just working out quite well for him. It's a tough, tough guard. We've got four minutes left in this game. Four minutes left. We obviously want to thank all of our viewers. We appreciate your time. We're going to be seeing a full field hammer. Greg Dennis wow. gets up there and rests it down. Maybe not the best decision, but it works out for Martin because he's in the end zone again. Dennis giving up a significant height advantage to Jasper Dupuy, but the timing, the athleticism, the body uh, making that play. Jasper forced to make a tight, tight defensive play there. Couldn't get there in time. And Greg Dennis, you have to give him full props for actually keeping with that disc as it did a bit of a double helix on the way through where it was a full field hammer, but he just kept his eyes on it. Oh, Martin comes in there. He couldn't get that D because Andre just rips it away. Number eight, all the way down the field. There's a lot of bodies oh. in there. That's not how that was supposed to go. An unfortunate play there. Uh, you know, a little bit of contact there. Players not seeing each other as they're running. You really hate to see that happen. We obviously hope everyone is okay. Andre is down right now on the field. We do obviously hope that he's okay. Um, those types of plays are things we're trying to take out of the sport at this point. Like you said earlier, Prime, there are a lot of bodies moving all at once. Uh, people running full speed into each other is definitely not good for the body, and especially if you just don't see them coming in a play like that. Interestingly, at this tournament, uh, Halifax Ultimate implementing the WIFDIF dangerous play rule, allowing players to call dangerous play before or without any contact happening. So certainly, uh, the player on Dark Horse there could have called a dangerous play and pulled up, seeing that Jasper Bunch player coming in. Um, unfortunately, not a lot of players here aware of that rule, used to calling that play. Hopefully we'll see some more of that to avoid plays like this in the future. Absolutely. We see Andre getting up, which is great to see. I have to agree with your point there, Prime. The whiff diff rule does seem to be the right decision because sometimes people think it's not a dangerous play because there was no contact. But we're trying to take those types of plays out of the game before contact happens and people get hurt. So it's always good to have learning before an accident happens. So whiff diff rules working out that time. And we do obviously hope that Andre is okay. We will probably be coming back into the game here. Likely a foul call on one party or another, but uh, it's all pretty much peanuts at this point. Yeah, Andre, having a good game. You know, you hate to see him leave like this. Um, hopefully he's good for the next one. All right, and the disc comes in, and that is a hammer for Miguel straight to Yannick. That's in the end zone. Again, it just doesn't feel quite as good at this point with the injured player on the sideline. We've got Physio here. Might give him a little checkup later just to see how everything's going. Stu Shoop's going to bring this disc in, and he's ready to roll. Open side throw, makes it to Bruno. Stu Shoop goes up the line. Yannick rips that one away. I'm not sure what he saw there. Yannick I had that lane covered fairly well. That's okay though. Bruno plays good transition defense. Goes straight to the drop off. One minute left to play. I'm seeing some hands looking to the break side. Let's see what comes of it. Oh, he turfs that one. No foul call. Greg Dennis with a clap. Greg Dennis he loves very to see excited. That. Team's up, but he loves getting those defensive plays. Alain, big fake. Joseph Martin, again, having a wonderful game. Can he keep it up? He's had a great track record. Him and Lou just work off each other so well. Oh, inside. Oh, that was a great throw. Didn't work out necessarily. Bruno's going to owe Yannick a beer later on for dropping that one. Absolutely. That was a great little throw and just kind of bopped off the old fingertips. We've all been there. Ferret squares it up, gets up there, sees it. Throws it up there. Time's already expired. Martin's not giving up, though. And we'll call that a no goal. And again, we want to thank you so much for your time today. And that is everything from myself and Prime here. 
So, anything you want to say before we go, Prime? Uh, Godspeed and good luck. Thanks so much.